Joining us on this episode is Chris Selecki. Chris is a wedding photographer based in Hamburg, Germany, who has taken his passion for the untouched beauty of Nordic landscapes and created a business, life, and body of work that affords him the opportunity to work all around the world. Being encompassed by the natural landscapes he loves most, finding both clients and photographers who seek out the same high mountains, forested valleys, rugged coastlines, and endless summer evenings. I'm Kyle Wilson, and this is The Photographer's Problem. How are you doing, Chris? Hi, I, I'm fine. I'm, I'm I'm really happy we rescheduled <laughs> our meeting to not have it like in the middle of the night. <laughs> I mean, we could have had a midnight video rendezvous. That would have been totally. fine. But yeah, pajamas. I think we... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're. Um, I'm lower half pajamas. This is upper yeah. half normal clothes. This is, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's the, the, the regular pandemic meeting outfits. Yeah, no I'm in. I've been in shorts every day for two years. Hasn't everyone else? Nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I'm glad we picked a regular time. It's um, it's much easier to get a light, nice lighting in here. You look really great. You've got a nice little setup going on there. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah so we, we don't know a ton about each other, which is really amazing. So I get to like hit Truly. really high-level questions. So yeah. you're a wedding photographer, but I did just find out for a while there you were in software engineering of some sorts. That's well, true. How long ago was that? What was that transition like? Um, that's, I think this year is, um, the seventh year. Yeah. Something like that. Um, yeah. Uh, transition was uh, honestly not too bad because I was, uh, I shoot like, I don't know, my, my mom gifted me the first, uh, camera back when there was no digital. Um, and then. I kind of dropped out for the teenage years. There was more computer gaming was more interesting than shooting photos, but then I hopped Same. in again. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so I, I'm shooting since ages um, and I'm professional since like, well, full-time professional since six, seven years and about that time frame, uh, part-time before. So. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't just like uh, jumping into cold. Yeah, it wasn't like the flip of a switch. I don't think it ever is. Like I, my dad was a wedding photographer, and so I was just kind of around it. But during my late teens, I was I was playing Halo. I was busy. I had had Halo (laughs) things to do, and then I picked up a camera when I was like twenty or something, and slowly over time, it like took over everything else. And then I've been full time photo for like ten years now. And but but it wasn't like I didn't go from Monday to Tuesday and go all right. I'm going to be yeah, a full-time yeah, so, so. This is how it's going to work. So, I'm, I'm going to jump ship. I, I restarted, I think, with my honeymoon back then. So I just just like traveling again, and I want to have a camera and shoot. And I just bought like the the the, the average entrance camera, and then it started from there. Yeah. Do you, do you find any balance with or struggle with the balance of like working versus I just want to make stuff? I just want to make photos or just take photos. Um, I'm going through that right now. So that's why I'm asking. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I, uh, my first feeling was no, but honestly, yeah, it's, I mean, things changed. I, I, I started this business out of passion, um, of course. And then, uh, like more the business part took off. Of course, I love to take pictures and I love to be creative and stuff. Uh, but I think uh, in our industry, um, a lot of photographers are just good artists and not so much good business people. Um, and so the business part definitely took over since I'm full-time self-employed. Um, I do like if the creative projects for myself uh, in off season. Mostly. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I feel like it's I've I've photographed for other people and in a way that I've always loved. I mean, I love shooting weddings um, yeah. in a distinct way. And then I've always had this like kind of personal work on the side that doesn't yeah. really have it doesn't fit any structure oh, yeah, and it yeah, doesn't yeah. have a plan. There's no money. Yeah, there's um, no money. You don't know where to post. Does it fit? Yeah. What do I that. what do I do with this? I have piles of images that Same. don't do anything for me. Same. And so even for the longest time, figuring out how to properly data back up those outside yeah. of a wedding yearly yeah. system. <laughs> um, now I can feel like I'll go, out, I'll kind of go out through the world and I don't bring a camera anywhere, but I'm tugged at it. I'm grabbing my phone. I'm taking, I'm purposely trying to take really well composed edited photos on my yeah, phone. Yeah, so yeah. there must be, there must be a draw. 
So like this last week, I actually have been trying to rethink what what is it about the personal work that I make that I don't like? And it's that I try to give myself too many photos to work through. I think I try to walk away with a hundred images to edit and deliver like I do any other shoot. And so I want to try to pivot that to what if I just took one picture? Yeah, what if true. I took five? Totally. What if I just totally. booked a model yeah, yeah, yeah. and a studio space and an yeah. idea yeah, and I yeah, only yeah. walked out with five images yeah, that I really some, want? Yeah, 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 totally. Um, I was, well, a few years ago, I really had my camera with me like wherever I go. Um, and uh, this changed. I'm not doing that anymore. But um, like, um, now before the pandemic, I thought about like like getting a small one, just like shoot on JPEG, just like a, a like a Fuji X one hundred V or something, just like having everything in cam, just shoot and publish kind of, um, without all the hassle of culling and editing and and stuff like that. So just like really click. And done. Yeah. <laughs> that well, sometimes, awesome. sometimes I see these shoots, you know, that pop up on my explore page or just that other friends mm. are in. And I go, wow, this is a really amazing singular image. Were there mm. 300 other photos that this guy delivered mm. in yeah, a gallery totally. to his client as well? Or totally. were there like five? Totally. No, yeah. And I've never, and I don't know, with weddings, I'm the authority in the space. So I show up and the clients are like, yeah, you've shot 675 weddings. You're the boss. Yeah. But with a portrait session or a model or for personal fun stuff, I feel like, well, is this normal? Is it, am I going to get pushed back? If I go, Hey, I'm only going to give you a couple of pictures today is just, a, I'm going to waste an hour of your time yeah, yeah, for yeah. a couple of pictures. Is, is somebody going to question that? <laughs> yeah. 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 No, I mean, it's a different thing for a couple of uh, session. Uh, it's less time. They normally don't pay the price they pay for a wedding. <laughs> totally, totally, so, yeah. And uh, especially if like if it's a, a creative project like TFP or something, I, I started to to limit uh, the amount to like, well, okay, I'm going I'm going to shoot basically way too much, and I'm going to cut it down and deliver something like 100 maybe. Um, but you can shoot three from that. Yeah, yeah. Three images. So and yeah, and I want to go more. And I want yeah. to go in with that mindset too. I want to go in yeah. with the one or two or three because right now the way I shoot is pretty winging it. I don't go in with a yeah. big plan. I'm just like, yeah. we'll figure it out. And I thought, yeah. what if I tried? Yeah. What if yeah. I like actually put a plan into it like I do with yeah. weddings? But yeah. I feel a struggle like that with two. I used to carry a camera all the time yeah. and I have purchased so many cameras under the <laughs> self, self-sold self plan of, oh yeah, like you can justify this camera. Like it'll fit yeah, this yeah, one yeah. distinct little day. <laughs> um, I really want a Ricoh GR3 because I think it'll be a great pocketable camera on my bike rides. I don't need to spend a thousand dollars on another camera, mm-hmm. but yeah, I true. really, but I really want it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm at the, at the same point at the moment <clears throat> with going to medium format. It's mm. just like, ah, I really love to have this. Um, oh, it's, it's technically not medium format, but I'm, I'm, I'm having an eye on Fuji uh gfx 100 that's a nice camera <laughs> I, use, really, I, I, uh, I i've done one shoot on the very first one which i didn't know it was like pre-release when i had it so it's actually like one of the first people in the country to like have my hands on it and i got to do like one of my model shoots with it and i went man if i wasn't a wedding photographer and yeah. i didn't need speed yeah. i would buy this thing pretty quickly and, it is nice <laughs> and my brain started to justify the expense it's just like mm. oh maybe taking out of the speed because it's technically not so fast is a good idea to reduce like images and to slow down and blah 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 uh, it's, uh, i mean if you yeah. can convince yourself of that you should probably just buy a leica if you can convince yourself of anything like that's there's a way to spend six yeah, g's and say true. oh it's I slow mean, it slows me down yeah. <laughs> that's true um, but I really love the like the medium format look, and um, I was at a at a wedding conference in Prague uh, this year, and there was this Polish guy right beside me at dinner, <laughs> uh, lunch. It was lunch uh, with with that camera and like a, a manual lens, and um, I asked him if I can try it out, and it was just like sh- I shot this pic of this random guy in front of me, and it was just like. You're like, if Fuck. this is so good, there goes the money. Is... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Well, it sounds like you should probably. I'm gonna. Enc- I'm an encourager and enabler, so I think you should do it. Um, yeah, and I, and I will. <laughs> yeah, I think I think you should. It's oh, those files are 
so beautiful to work with yeah. too. Um, I've just never, that was my first experience with any kind of medium format um, in a digital fashion so that I could like put it on my computer and actually play with it. And just, yeah. I remember zooming in really close and showing my dad and being like, look at this. He goes, yeah, whatever. And then I like pulled back from where it was and he goes, holy crap, this is an incredible camera. <laughs> yeah. Man. Yeah. And um, so that's the next thing. So um, I'm, I'm also going on, like adventures on and landscape stuff and i was two times in in svalbard and um had two encounters with polar bears but just like very far away because it was much safer it was not from a boat it was from a snowmobile um and i have the yeah the nikon what was it d850 with 50 megapixels and so you can crop and stuff and yeah. bring it out and but it's, it's just okay. not the same but with 100 megapixels, <laughs> man, you can really, yeah, you can really get in there. Uh. <laughs> so the next time we chat with Chris, he's going to be a Fuji ambassador with a full yeah, kit series of GFXs. Uh, and he's going to be, <laughs> you just need one. Uh, and you're going to have photos of national geographic coverage for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Do you, so is, are weddings your primary uh, True, primary yeah. source? And uh, is this something you're trying to do some other stuff in the future as well, or you just kind of uh, yeah, keep, on, sure. keep on the wedding so, trend? So no, uh, no, no. I try to avoid the wedding trend. Yeah, <laughs> I feel yeah. So, I feel like wedding weddings have an expiration date as a as a full career. It's kind of an interesting space. Yes. Yeah. So I'm uh, originally I'm coming from uh, travel and landscape. That was uh, the stuff I did before I slide it into wedding photography yeah. um, i can see that within your work too it's you're definitely you. very like your landscape and travel takes its it's its own um it's its own subject within within yeah, your yeah. body of work for sure yeah and um i try i i recently saw that i'm too long in the in the bubble in the wedding photography bubble and i want to get more back to the beginning of my wedding photography when i was a landscape photographer shooting weddings um because it was it was so much fun and it was so easy because i didn't know anyone i didn't know any trend i just did what i what i love i i, I just took okay i love landscapes here are people i put them in landscapes Bam, that's my view on love. Bam, uh, stuff like that. And I want to get back more into that at the moment. Um, what does that look yeah. like tangibly? Like, what is, is there a different approach to your clients or to the work that you show? Or is yeah, it all internal? Yeah, yeah um, kind of both. Uh, so, uh, uh, of course, it's a lot of um, uh, internal stuff, um, but also um, external because. Um, trying to transform more into a, like elopement thingy because to be honest at the moment i have like normal wedding clients i also do have elopements um but i love elopements and it yeah. really fits into that landscape and it really fits to to being introverted and the clientele really fits yeah, into that brand that as well totally, or into that totally, style totally so um I'm changing things on my website. It's a lot about copywriting as well and uh, creating like specific price lists for, for elopements and stuff. Um, so at the moment it's like a transformation. Yeah. That's amazing though, that you can kind of catch that within yourself. Cause I, I, I grew up shooting weddings in the Chicagoland area, which is um, photographing people on golf courses and trying to not yeah. let it look like a golf course. <laughs> And then oh. I made the transition to Washington and I had this assumption that when I went to Seattle, especially like during my first year or two, I thought yeah. everybody in Seattle was going to look like a Ben Heish wedding. I just imagined yeah. every, every <laughs> client in Seattle must look like they walked out of an REI magazine yeah. and that then not. they're not, they're a city too. They have plenty of ballrooms and guess what? Golf courses. Yeah. And <laughs> then slowly started navigating towards that elopement and, and couples that really cared more about the people at their day rather than the stuff at their day. And I think that was a really good conduit for me. If I said, Hey, let's, <laughs> let's focus on clients that care about the relationships within their day. Yeah. And that will usually limit the size of the wedding itself and start to put me in better venues and or geographical locations that I want to yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. But focusing um, on just elopements has been, I mean, I, I know a lot of photographers want to do that, but I never nailed it. It's, it's kind of a hard space to carve your space out of. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, um, 
like with everything, you always see, oh, there are so many people doing this, there are so good people, um, people are so good doing this, blah, blah, blah. But if you don't start, I mean, um, you doesn't matter which market you are, it's always saturated. Um, and yeah. if I have listened to other photographers before going into wedding photography, I wouldn't have done it. And yeah, there's true. just, a, uh, uh, I mean, it's, there are really a lot of clients out there and um, I live in Hamburg. We have like, I don't know, two and a half million people here. And every weekend I'm, I'm going around, I see weddings without photographers, weddings with photographers who seem to do the very basic stuff, yeah. uh, stuff like that. So that was marketing. a really nice way to put that, by the way. Yeah. That, was really, that was really kind of you. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I don't think the market is uh, saturated. Um, yeah. Is a lot of your stuff in your local Hamburg driving yeah, radius yeah, or do you, I, do you travel out for things? No, um, um, I didn't, um, I, well, I don't market myself as a destination wedding photographer. Um, a lot of stuff is Hamburg and like the Northern Germany area. But I also, I also shot in, in California and the Netherlands and did stuff on Iceland and Sweden and things. So, um, these things pop up and they're always, always nice. Um, and I love like the Northern countries a lot. Um, but I don't especially at the moment market, uh, for like, yeah, they just kind of come to be in their natural way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've only been to Germany for it's actually really silly two hours, unfortunately, uh, <laughs> Sounds like I was in Frankfurt layover. <laughs> well, I was in Vienna or I was in, Aust I was in Austria and yeah. I think we were in Innsbruck and we were like, we're going to go up to some castle that I can't pronounce. that starts with an N and we're going to take, North we're going to take this probably. Yeah. We're gonna like take the this, most famous job. Yeah. 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 Like Cause that, it was yeah. right over the border and we yeah, could yeah. take this train or this bus and we got there and then we could not figure, it was like kind of a real, last minute thing and we couldn't figure out transportation from the bus where we got dropped off to get yeah. to get to the castle and yeah. so we ended up we looked at our time and we went hey let's just enjoy whatever town we're in right now yeah, and we hung yeah. out there for a little bit <laughs> but i could tell immediately just similar austria of course too just this this beautiful geographical landscape so close True. by i'm in illinois where it's just corn everywhere so yeah. <laughs> i i have to go to other i for i forcibly have to transport myself to other locations but it's so great that you're able to <clears throat> have that business within drivable distance of you and you can still come home to <laughs> home. Like that's, that's a huge benefit, I think. And in, in yeah, definitely. Space. And, um, I don't know if you know, like James Frost, do you know him? Uh, I know the name, but I, I couldn't put piece Frost, of a piece of work out. Frosty photos on Instagram and James Frost was, uh, he's uh, from the UK and, uh, he lived in Australia for uh, some years and everybody here was, uh, uh, speaking to him and say, oh, it must be so great to do stuff in Australia, landscape, blah, blah. And he said, yeah, it's, it's nice. But when you want to see something else, you have to fly at least eight hours to get somewhere else. And in Europe, it's, I don't know, two hours drive and you're in a different country. So uh, that's, um, especially for Europeans, we don't think about that very often. Yeah, I, I interviewed uh, Kat Eckleboom White a couple of weeks yeah. back, and she's just incredible and has really, um, really beautiful insight on sustainability and integrity yeah, yeah, and ethics true. within like how she manages. She doesn't go anywhere. She wants to work yeah. within her own couple of hours space, but she also doesn't really want anyone else to come into that space either because of, you know, what they do, the, what do they do to the environment and yeah, they're not true. paying taxes and they're not, you know, not really yeah. helping, helping facilitate the, the road yeah. structures and everything. Um, but hearing her view of it, that she just has everything within a couple hours of distance and that's where she wants to go. Or I have a friend, Melody Joy in Edinburgh and she is within yeah. a couple of hours of Glencoe in the Highlands, but she doesn't yeah. want to go there. She's like, I only want to do the stuff immediately in my city vicinity. Yeah, I want to yeah. come home to my husband at six yeah. o'clock and I want to <laughs> hang out. I want to be at home. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I, I'm really envious of the option to have such beautiful things. I have to fly probably three or four hours to get to anything cool, mm -hmm. um, which isn't so bad because once I'm there, once I'm in Seattle, there's so much to do within a five hour drive from that center point. True. Thank but you. being where I'm at now, it's like, all right, well, I like to live here, but if I want to create the work I love, I'm, I'm going to have to go somewhere else. And so I yeah. think that leans back into that. I always want to make stuff, but I kind of want to do it at arm's length. I still want to yeah, like yeah. have that within my immediate reach. It's 
Yeah, it's, it's, it's very convenient. I mean, you have your home here, you have your bed, you don't um, have to have to deal with flights or with hotels or with delays or something. So um, destination wedding is always like the dream thing you can do as a photographer. But I have also friends uh, who really struggled during pandemic because there was no flight, there was no entering another country or leaving or stuff. So we have a business that requires people to be in a room together and true. you can be in a room together. Yeah, yeah true. I mean, for uh, here in Germany, for photographers, it was okay-ish. I mean, you have to adapt, uh, but still, since photography is not like really close encountering, uh, you can do shoots outside with two people. Um, you, you didn't have like the huge weddings, um, but yeah. I think, it much... piv- I think it pivoted a lot of weddings where they started to get a little, like, I don't feel like I see, I mean, they may be coming back now, but I didn't see for a while the big two, three, 400 person weddings happening anymore, which never I'm never, I'm never really a like part that. of to begin with, yeah. but yeah. I feel like they lessened down a lot. People went, okay, we don't need to invite everyone we know to this wedding. Maybe we invite yeah. the eight <laughs> people we actually care about. Yeah. Um, and so it kind of forcibly changed the wedding mindset a little bit for the better, yeah. in my opinion, yeah. but yeah. I think as well, but also we have, I mean, we have to adapt to that because um, I, I can see it in Germany and I think it's like basically a whole Europe. Uh, this season is kind of strange. Um, I've heard that. Yeah, it's uh, um, prices are going up and like we have the energy crisis and, pe- and I heard from a lot of couples that the locations don't pull up put out prices like three months before the wedding day. So you can oh, wow. you have to re- reserve them still two years in advance, but uh, like what the final price is, you don't know until three months before. Oh, wow. So I, couldn't am- people... I couldn't imagine booking a venue and yeah, not because, knowing, is it going to yeah, be 5,000 or 12,000? Same. same. Uh, I think I, I can imagine they have like a range, but they think uh, they say oh, we can't estimate it because of energy prices and stuff. Um, that Have you makes... felt that you're able to raise your prices? Like I was everything because like, <clears throat> I feel like in the photography industry, everything always goes up. But as soon as I raise prices to, to match that, I feel like, <laughs> wait, wait, I'm not like allowed to or something. Um, um, yeah, I do. I, I, I do raise prices and I did over the last years. And um, I had discussions with um, the friend of photographers about that during pandemic because we had a lot of photographers like, lowering prices or lowering the um, deposit um, which was honestly not good because um, what we always forget is that we are normally not our clients um, our clients are in a full-time job doing something else they they weren't they weren't able to uh, to spend money on restaurants on vacations and stuff like that so in the first pandemic year um, I sold um, my biggest package a lot because people had money and they said, okay, we can't invite like 100 people. We can only invite like 50, but we want to have like a really good party and we're spending it on, on that and uh, on a good photographer. Yeah. The budget, the budget pie chart shifted to like what goes yeah. towards photo versus yeah, what goes yeah, towards totally. table settings. But I also think that the pandemic, um, teach a lot of people that you don't have to invite 200 people or 300 yeah. people and that you can have a good party with 50 people and don't have to spend so much money on that, which, which I do enjoy personally because it fits what I would do. <laughs> but of course, if my, if my pricing and my packages is based around like the huge wedding stuff, um, this, there's no fit. So I have to adapt to that. Just like maybe six hours weddings are okay again. Do yeah. That. Yeah. It's it's funny to see the, the title shifts in it. When I first started, oh my gosh, I would be I would be lingering at these weddings until like midnight, one in the morning, and I thought that's what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, and then yeah. I worked for a photographer and we left at eight thirty and I went, yeah. What? Yeah. We're, that's okay. I've been allowed to do okay. this the whole time. I thought yeah, I had yeah. to be I'm a photographer. I thought I had to be here from bookend to bookend. Um and then now it's shifted where yeah, I mean, sometimes sometimes a dip 
after first dance. Like that's it. That's what they paid. That's yeah. what they want. They're like, yeah, we that's don't. It. We're not. We're good. For, cool. I'm gonna go home. The sun's still up. This is nice. Yeah, this is uh, what what I do normally, and I think about a lot of uh, photographers here in Germany as well. It's it's just like starting with getting ready, and then dropping out after the first party wave like an hour before first dance uh, after first dance uh and then the rest of the party is that no that's about where i'm at too day. i i always tell them like halfway through getting ready just kind of right in the middle and yeah. then two to three songs into open dance after yeah. whatever the last like event of the reception is yeah. and then it's like cool i've got two th- i can get every bit of dancing yeah, i need the whole three song. songs yeah. After that, it's a it's a drunk, sweaty mess, and they can do that on iPhones. They don't need me yeah. for that. <laughs> um, I did. I've told the story a couple times because I think it's kind of funny. I had my I had a wedding in Seattle like three weeks ago, yeah. and I've never seen I've never seen this particular booze go so quickly. Um, it's seven thirty. It's still daylight because it doesn't sunset till like nine something. It's muddy because yeah. we're in Rainier and it's been raining all day, and they've got no mixers, so it's just booze and wine and beer. Yeah. And they hammered through three handles of Jägermeister by 7.30. <laughs> and I went up to the planner and I could tell I could tell the bride was a little a little movie before the before the speeches even. And I went to the planner and I went, yo, these guys, these guys are gonna be smashed fast. Like they're gonna be a dance like a dance party in the daytime, just trashed. Um, and so I, I dipped like an hour early and I already planned to, to begin with, but I was like, I'm definitely leaving. There's no need for me to be here anymore. <laughs> and they were just doing, so I've got photos of parents and grandparents doing Jaeger bombs, which I think is really funny. Um, and I, and it's something I asked the planner or the, um, the officiant about, and he said, oh yeah, I, I introduced them to the Jaeger bomb like five years ago and they really loved it. <laughs> and I, they, they, they just, they, they've been running with it since. So I have all these older people just slant and it's only a party of like, there were only like 40 people there. Yeah, nice. It's a small group. To <laughs> Sounds like a good three. party. <laughs> it was a good party. I bet they had, and then we had cabins on site, so they could just like walk to their cabin. Who knows what they had in their cabin too, so. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I just hadn't, I hadn't seen it. I'd never seen three bottles go that quickly before. Yeah. <laughs> so funny. But it's good, good. It's good to like, I'm, I'm glad when I can see the, like that, like, cool. They're going to lean into it. It's a bummer when the wedding is like not fun and you can tell you're like, oh, if you guys had just drank a little bit more. <laughs> or if you had a different, or if the weather, you know, it was raining and they didn't care. It was a rainy, gloomy day, and they were Perfect. like, "It doesn't matter. We're gonna have the Perfect. best time." I mean, that's that's the thing about weddings. You can have like a really short twelve-hour wedding, and you can have a really long three-hour wedding as well. It's Ooh, just, that's a good. That's like, a really okay, good way to put like, that. Okay, <laughs> like like it's. 30 minutes to go. Oh no, it's two hours left. <laughs> yeah. I'm always really looking for the, um, as soon as, as soon as bright, like couples formals and family formals are done, I feel like I cruise right into an autopilot mode. I'm like, dude, that's the hard part. I've mm-hmm. done the getting ready. I've done the couples. I've done the groups. I've done, I've done the ceremony. Everything else from here on out is like butter. This is yeah. easy street now. And it, even if it's four hours left, that's cool. I don't mind. Yeah. Kind of feels like second shooting where I don't really have to think yeah. too hard yeah. about it. Yeah. Which yeah, but really sometimes nice. you have like, uh, do you have like people grouping together and not really interacting and not dancing and just I've, standing I've there? I've had that. I feel like I remember the weddings where I had that, where I'm like, oh, this was like a weird social group or mm. years and years and years ago I had one where it really, the divide was so distinct and it felt like mm. each side thought the mm. other, that their person could have done better. And that's what the vibe was. And really neither side could have, they both were kind of like Dilbert characters in real life. They were pretty funny, (laughs) but like they were, it was just kind of a very introverted antisocial wedding. And it seemed like Mm -hmm. the entire family was that way. And that, that was a weird one where I went, there's nobody on the dance floor. The kids are on the dance floor and no one else. What is happening? Yeah. I I had one wedding like this and uh, it really turns out like that. My, my couple were the rock stars who, who were like, Fuck you. We are, we are getting married. We love each other. Uh, so we are doing this no matter what our, our uh, relatives are doing. And first dance with them and then the party started and no one was going on the floor. Just like, I think, three kids or, or something like that. That was really annoying. Um, but sometimes it's like that. Yeah, you're right, though. Sometimes like that three hour reception, you can look at your watch you're like, oh, my gosh, this like spent this like went really fast or 
oh my god these guys have never been to a party yeah. how oh, how yeah. did you guys ever go to a bar when you were like 21 and get like smashed and dance with each other yeah. what's going on here yeah it, it, you're looking at your watch like half an hour later and fuck just five minutes gone yeah you're like oh it's a sunday wedding that's what's yeah. happening everybody has work tomorrow <laughs> yeah yeah, those are the struggle too. I really love Thursday elopements, but I don't love a Thursday wedding because I'm like, everyone's like, you can't, it's fr- <laughs> tomorrow's Friday morning. Everyone's going to need to wake up and do things. They can't like go crazy. True. But yeah, I've been shifting out of it. I I, I definitely have started to realize when I go to a wedding, I, I, I have this little hint in the back of my head of like, I don't really want to be here. And that's not good. Ah, that's not good yeah. for the client. And it's not good for me. And <laughs> I think some of it is, some of it's weddings that I just shouldn't be booking. Like I once in a blue, I'll have a session here in Chicago and I have to catch myself and go, you know what, no matter how you hard you try or how enticing the, the check looks, Chicago clients are just not inherently always your client. Mm-hmm. Um, and then if I get the right one in Washington or Iceland or something, it's beautiful. But yeah, I've, I used to be able to kind of internally put up with the the handful of weddings a year where you're like, oh, it didn't line up the way I'd hoped. Their personality wasn't what I maybe thought it was when I booked them or we chatted throughout things or the day has totally shifted from what it was initially when they inquired. Um, and I used to kind of be able to put kind of walk past that, but now I'm, I'm starting to feel it inside where I'm like, I'd much rather be home. It's a Saturday. I'd way rather be riding bikes with my mm-hmm. friends. Um, and so that feels like a pretty good time to go. All right. That's not good for the clients, not honoring them. It's not honoring mm-hmm. my own time mm-hmm. either. Um, so just trying to find, like I said, the, as the, the portrait work and the side work where I just maybe produce a couple of images is starting to pull me more. And, um, and it's like the universe is speaking to me. Multiple occasions yeah, have yeah, come yeah. up now where it's like, Hey, you should be focusing on maybe this, this might be your next accidental thing. Yeah. My cat is coming. I didn't know if it was a cat or a kid. I have a cat. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I know what you mean. Um, I, I had this after the pandemic when the first like full day wedding come on and I was, I was like, whew, that is a really long day. I mean, when I'm at the wedding, it's, it's normally fine. And I'm, I'm always come back and say, okay, that was a good time. Because I, I, I managed to nail down my clients in, in the direction that I want to have them. So I, I, I have the right clients for me. Um, but anyway, it's a, it's, it's a long day. And um, I started to do like different things. Um, I'm doing workshops. I'm also starting to do uh, landscape photography, photo tours. For, oh yeah, I saw that on your site. I was interested about you. that too. I was gonna, I was gonna probe you about that. Like, what is? Because you, you've always got some workshops that I'm assuming focus on wedding photography, but yeah. then you've got these landscape photo tours. Yeah. Is that people that <laughs> are leaning on your expertise of the space that you're going, or are you teaching people how to properly think through a landscape photo series, Both. or everything in between? Both. Yeah. Yeah. Well. <clears throat> Um, I did the landscape stuff uh, for myself. So I I love to travel, especially Scandinavian countries. uh, And I I just love the solitude and like the landscape and the mood. Um, But whenever I I posted something from my trips that I did for my own, someone was popping up with, oh, you're so lucky to go there. And uh, I would love to go there as well. And I always thought like, "Mm, the only thing I did to go there was book a flight. And maybe the first first night in a hotel and and the car for one or two weeks, depending on where you are. And the rest is going to figure out itself. Um, So I thought about um, why am I not taking people with me? Just, you know, like it, it's with everything when, when you haven't done uh, anything before, you're always looking for a review or someone who did it before so you can get advice. Um, so I started to do that um, at the moment on the Faroe Islands. And it's uh, for, for people who, who are just like landscape photography and to the ads or people who bought a camera because they love photography, but they hadn't really time to dig into it. And then it's getting dusted. And um, so 
give them the opportunity to to join on an awesome trip to awesome landscapes how and, many how many people are you is it like a big crew or is it usually just like you bring a couple people at a time no just just a couple a uh, couple of people uh, because it's uh especially from for the fair islands um it's normally good to keep them in one car because it's much easier. You don't have to organize a second driver. Um, you can coordinate more. And uh, the smaller the group is, the more uh, you can adjust the tour to the specific needs of the people. So um, last time I had uh, two people in there who uh, were afraid of heights, for example. So uh, That's hard to be a landscape photographer to be afraid of heights. You're going to be on some yeah. mountains. <laughs> uh, yeah. In the deserts, it's fine. <laughs> um, <laughs> On the Faroe Islands, you have a lot of cliffs, which are yeah. really high, um, but you can do <clears> stuff, but of course you can adopt more to the speed and the needs of the people uh, when you have a smaller group than when you have like 50 people around. Do you, <clears throat> has your landscape work ever been something that you like sell in terms of art prints or things, or has that yeah. been truly like, cause it's, it's pretty neat that you obviously started landscapes yeah. tr twisted yeah, yeah, yeah. that to be a wedding business yeah, now yeah. you've kind of come now you're shifting that back and now yeah. you're able to take i mean really landscapes are the conduit to like all of your work which is pretty cool yeah yeah uh <clears throat> yeah i do sell i do sell landscapes over um, at stocksy.com in cool vancouver island um, um i also had um a bunch of work published at, um, I think it was National Geographic, New Zealand and stuff like that. Incredible. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's so, so amazing that people can find you now for like this, this thing of simple as landscape photography can be this yeah. uh, thing that facilitates so many avenues of your business and including like workshops now, like landscape photographer workshops, yeah. which I'm sure has existed before. But yeah, I, it's totally. not something I've seen any other wedding. I don't know any other wedding photographer who has that as one of their uh, avenues to to focus on. Thank you. Which has Thank been I, I have to like how long are these? So you're two people in the Faroe Islands. So is it a few days together? Yeah, it's um, around a week. Amazing. Yeah, yeah I, like I think that's like six days. my favorite my favorite couple sessions I've ever had, whereas we've spent like a couple days together in Iceland True. or a couple days together in totally. Spain. Cause you really get to know each other and so, you're really totally. buddies by the end of that. Yeah. Um, so I, I have to, I have to assume you're like making really cool connections to these people too, while you're yeah, totally. out and teaching them. But totally. And it's, uh, of course it's, it's landscape photographies, but they get, they come back home with a lot of good pictures of them in landscapes as well. I bet. Because yeah. <laughs> That's a wedding stuff in there. And the funny thing is, um, do they know that going in? Do they go like, Hey, is there going to be some photos of us too? Uh, they don't expect it, but, um, cool. of course they have no choice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, you're here. We're in the middle of nowhere. And yeah. I'm, oh, can you I'm stand a, over I'm a there people just... photographer too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and the good thing is, uh, when I was on the Faroe Islands in October last year, um, I extended it for for a week just for private relaxing and going around and exploring new areas for the tour and stuff. And I was at a random cliff uh, somewhere and there was this uh, couple <laughs> uh, who also hiked there and um, they asked me if I could take a picture of them and of course I couldn't. Yeah. Uh, and I did and it turned out they got engaged like a week before on Scotland. Um, oh, and then we did a short session and then I had one more day before my flight took off and I had no plan for that day. And I texted them, hey, do you want to have engagement photos taken? <laughs> <laughs> because I would love to shoot uh, a couple here and they were totally in and it was, um, yeah, we did an engagement session on the Faroe Islands and it was really good. And now my friend says, okay, what about elopements on, on the Fair Islands or doing a um, wedding photography workshop there or stuff like that? Yeah, I mean, it's such a cool, distinct spot. But also, <laughs> how great for them that you weren't just some, not to diminish other landscape photographers, but not other not all landscape photographers know how to shoot a human. Um, yeah. It's just not, not the case. But That's true. That they got I, to run into you in the middle of a mountain and go, oh my gosh, we get... Yeah, they yeah. don't even know it, but they kind of got a great deal going yeah. on. 
and they and they asked me um, if I can shoot their wedding, uh, and it's this year and in Australia because they're from Australia. And I was like, yeah, I can do that, but flights are expensive. Crazy, it yeah. Takes me like two days to get to you. I but I can also recommend you a, a local Australian photographer. Um, so yeah, having really having nice. just having just been in Auckland and hearing how they have to take their trip to get to Europe and it's like a multi-day thing. Um, the kid next to me on the flight back here was visiting his parents. He's probably 17, 18. Mm -hmm. And he's like, yeah, I've got to do the 17 hour flight to Chicago. And then mm -hmm. I've got to fly to London and then I've got to fly mm -hmm. to Paris from there. And I was mm -hmm. like, you have such a long day, dude. Mm -hmm. I'm going to bed. <laughs> mm -hmm. So Actually, yeah. I think from Germany, it's 22 hours flight only without the delays. That's yeah, that's it's crazy. I have a wedding next year in Australia, um, but they've kind of put things on hold for a second. So we'll you know, from some medical costs that have come up. So we'll have yeah. to see. But I'm I'm hoping I've I've always wanted to book work over there and get over yeah. there. And so yeah. we'll have to see. But I I'm hoping uh I jump out to New Zealand more because I only got a little bit of a, a one day oh, so thing good. to kind of venture around to the coast. And yeah. it was like, oh <clears throat> somebody had offered me uh, a photographer friend there was like, Hey, I'm going to be going to the South Island and doing like a helicopter site, uh, not yeah. sightseeing, but, um, location <laughs> yeah. scouting yeah, for, yeah. Uh, for another shoot. <laughs> and he goes, can you come? And I went, I fly out around tomorrow. Queenstown and all that area. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah I, I've I, been to New, I've been to New Zealand twice. Uh, um, and I really love to go back because it's just an amazing country. Yeah. I'm excited to get back. I really felt, um, it's just my, childhood brain but i was like this feels lord of the rings this feels yeah. okay. i feel like i'm in a fairy tale book right now it doesn't feel like washington which feels more like i'm in a boy scout ad um yeah. this felt like i was in a book um what an incredibly beautiful place i can't wait to see more of yeah but yeah totally well this has been so rad um I think your your unique perspective that you're able to take wedding or take landscape work and have shifted that into so many forms of business and personal life adventures for yourself is really, really unique. And I really haven't met anyone else that does that. So I think it's so cool. And I really appreciate our time today. No problem. <laughs>